So we don't have a species that exists in nature that has SARS-CoV-2. Um, but we have no proof that a lab had the vi had SARS-CoV-2 prior to its outbreak. We need one of those things to come forward to determine whether it was a lab leak or whether it was a zoonotic event. So the question is, which of those is going to happen? I have no idea. Both are possible. Which one is more likely? Based off the papers I've read from genetic, uh, vi uh, genetic virologists analyzing SARS-CoV-2, looking at it, its sequences, they're saying it's most likely a zoonotic event. <laughs>
Uh, people were messing around with viruses, combining things, giving them to animals, seeing how they worked. These viruses that you administer to animals in a lab setting, they can mutate and evolve naturally with, or, well, they evolve naturally within the artificial setting of the lab. So it's possible that a virus like the one in the bat species that's very similar to SARS-CoV-2 could have mutated slightly, could have been combined with this pangolin virus to create this chimeric virus that could have then leaked out of the lab and infected people. Like, now, the question is, is that possible? Absolutely, that's possible. There have been lab leaks of viruses many times before. It's happened. Like, the, there's been lab leaks, I believe, of things like... Um, I mean, I did this research a couple months ago. I'm annoyed that I'm forgetting some of the... the I think MERS, which is like Middle Eastern respiratory virus, had leaked out of some labs at some point. Um, I believe like the original SARS leaked. SARS-CoV-1 leaked as well a couple times. Like this is not unheard of. So the question is, is that possible? Absolutely. Were there reports of people in the, in the lab getting sick prior to the, to the first known, you know, sim uh, people with symptoms? Yes, they were. Um, do we have definitive proof? No, we don't. Right? So we don't have a species that exists in nature that has SARS-CoV-2. Um, but we have no proof that a lab had, had SARS-CoV-2 prior to its outbreak. We need one of those things to come forward to determine whether it was a lab leak or whether it was a zoonotic event. So the question is, which of those is going to happen? I have no idea. Both are possible. Which one is more likely? Based off the papers I've read from genetic, uh, vi uh, genetic virologists analyzing SARS-CoV-2, looking at it, its sequences, they're saying it's most likely a zoonotic event for a variety of very technical reasons that I don't quite remember off the top of my head. But when I read it, I was like, okay, that kind of makes sense. But there's real questions because of some of the secrecy that the the, <clears throat> the lab did, where they weren't necessarily being 100% transparent. They delayed the World Health Organization from coming into the lab to investigate. <clears throat> there's a lot of sort of sus and sketch stuff about the investigation. And on top of that, the investigation was like, I don't, I don't even, I don't know, I think it was like less than two weeks. Um, and so, and then you, you have to understand like there'd be incentives for a lab to withhold information that could condemn them to, um, because imagine, so imagine the repercussions being the scientists in this lab that the leak happened that caused this massive event, right? One of the most historic events in, in modern times that we can think of. There's like clear incentive to like not let people see, right? So you could like wipe hard drives that, that had the data on them that showed that you were working on these viruses. Um, So that's my thought. So if you ask me, what do I think? I think what needs to happen is an, a clear and open and deep investigation. That's all. Just need to figure it out. We need two things. One, we need the, uh, um, ideally what we need is people to investigate directly into the lab and figure out what they were working on. We need like their records of the viruses they were making, the gain of function research they were doing. We need, uh, and then separately, so that's like investigating the lab piece of it. And then separately, we need more exploration into different regions of China, um, into regions where we know SARS-like viruses exist, doing a lot of sampling of, of species, collecting data. Um, we need to go outside of China as well, places in Southeast Asia, because we know that it's possible that viruses can transmit that way as well, because um, cold, uh, cold storage meat is transported from one place to another. Um, and just, it's like a needle in a haystack though. You're going out there searching for trying to find that virus in a, in a, in a species, uh, of bat, most likely bat could be another species, but it could be bat, most likely bat. And whichever one we find first is the answer. It's just, well, we have, we may, and here's the thing. We may never know because the, the, we name, we never, we may never find the needle in the haystack and the data that would be useful for us to figure out if it came from the lab may be deleted may never existed or it just may not have been the lab so who knows sorry that was my long answer to your question akash does that make sense and you fools appa and doom guys are talking about arm angles i'm gonna blow my nose out.